The Gulf of Cambay is a vast area of water along the western coast of India. It's home to several important seaports, trade routes, and an ancient sunken city that's older than any civilization found there earlier. It was believed that the Hindu civilization was the oldest in the area, dating back 5,300 years. But in 2001, a group of marine scientists used sonars to study the bottom of the Gulf. They were shocked to find orderly groups of geometrical shapes there. Soon after, they sent specially equipped ships to further explore the mysterious finding. Researchers brought out several ancient artifacts and identified actual houses, baths, and a granary underwater. What astonished them was the age of the piece of wood they found along with tools and bones. It turned out to be 9,500 years old. Some scientists doubt that's a sign of a real unknown ancient civilization, though. There used to be forests in that area, and that piece of wood might just be a piece of wood. Still, if that city was actually built so long ago, it would rewrite the known history. When Apollo missions' rockets were sent to the orbit of the Earth and the Moon back in the 60s and 70s, their engines couldn't share the glory. They detached and fell right into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And that would have been the end of this story, if not for Jeff Bezos. In 2012, the Amazon CEO led a private expedition to find and recover the lost engines. He never said why, and many think he did it just because he could. Anyway, the expedition was a success. A few years later, the F-1 first-stage engines were brought to a space museum in Kansas for conservation, and later moved to Seattle's Museum of Flight. Everyone is welcome to take a look at those great artifacts of the era of moon travels. Now, this one's not about the ocean or sea, but rather a lake. Lake Michigan, namely. And prepare for a shock, an actual Stonehenge was found underneath its surface in 2012. Well, okay, that was sensational, but not true. In fact, divers discovered a pretty small V-shaped structure consisting of several upright stones. One of them had what looked like a carving of a mastodon. What inspired scientists much more was a discovery in the neighboring Lake Huron. They found a drowned prehistoric hunter campsite there. Sites like this dot North America, but this particular one was impressively well-preserved. Divers even found campfires with charcoal still in them. Nobody will be surprised by a river running over land. But how about an underwater river? Back in 2016, researchers located a deep-water channel in the Black Sea and decided to investigate it. To their surprise, they discovered it was an actual river, a strong, broad current running along the seafloor. It's formed by the saltier water of the Mediterranean Sea that flows into the Black Sea. The salt makes this water heavier than the rest, resulting in a strong underwater current. If it had been on land, it would have been among the six largest rivers in the world. It even has underwater waterfalls. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the longest mountain range in the world. Yet, chances are high you haven't ever seen it, unless you're a professional diver. This ridge is hidden deep under the water of the Atlantic Ocean, between the Americas and Africa. The undersea mountain range is largely unexplored, so there are many mysteries waiting to be uncovered there. And one of them has recently been brought to the spotlight. Strange tiny holes in the seabed arranged in straight lines at equal intervals. They could be natural formations, but little mounds of sediment around them suggest that someone, or something, excavated them for their own cryptic reasons. Scientists found similar holes several hundred miles away, too, but neither team was able to look inside. Researchers took samples from the mounds for analysis, but for now, the truth behind those mysterious holes remains unknown. Now, how would you react to an ancient train resting on the bottom of the ocean? Back in 1985, a scuba diver was mapping the ocean floor off the coast of New Jersey. He was using a magnetometer, which reacted to metallic objects on the seabed. Suddenly, he got two huge signals, meaning he had found something very big and very metallic. As he went to explore, the diver expected to find a shipwreck. Instead, to his astonishment, he stumbled upon a literal train wreck. And not a usual one. The two locomotives he saw standing proudly on the seabed were from the middle of the 19th century. There was a lot of fuss around the locomotives afterwards. 
Nobody could even guess what the trains from the 1860s were doing in the middle of the ocean. But there was an even more puzzling fact. There were no records of them being shipped or even ever built in the first place. No ships wrecked in the area at the time either. It remains unknown to this day how they happened to get there. The most popular theory is that they were being transported from Boston to New York when a storm hit. The trains were likely washed off the barge that was carrying them and eventually ended up on the ocean floor. Now, let's take a break from deep water diving and go to a sunny beach for some giant snowballs. Yeah, you'll need a warm overcoat for this one. It's in Siberia in the Arctic Circle. In 2016, local villagers witnessed a jaw-dropping event. Hundreds upon hundreds of snowballs started washing ashore. They were all perfectly round and varied in size from a golf ball to larger than a basketball. Even those who lived their entire lives along these shores said they'd never seen anything like it before. Still amazing as it is, scientists say the phenomenon is 100% natural. First, the beach was covered in ice. Then, the tides receded and the wind started pushing the ice across the sand. It began rolling and forming snowballs of different sizes. By the way, something similar can be seen in the winter on the shores of Lake Michigan. Ice sheets cover parts of the lake during winter months. When they break off, they start rolling in the waves, eventually floating ashore as giant ice balls. Now, if you ever sail the seas and notice a rubber ducky floating serenely on the waves in the middle of nowhere, that's okay. They're known as friendly floaties and have a pretty big following on the internet. In fact, there are about 28,000 such ducks. They're freely floating in the oceans and sometimes wash up on shores of various countries. They all originate from a single container ship that was transporting them to the US in 1998. A container with thousands of rubber duckies got loose and fell overboard, releasing the artificial birds into their not-so-natural habitat. Interestingly, marine scientists have been able to use these yellow travelers for their needs. They've been tracking their movements for years now to better understand the motions of ocean currents. Discovering a Lego figurine out at sea may not sound very exciting. Okay, someone lost their toy, no big deal. But what if that toy was twice the average human height? That was exactly the thing people found off the coast of the Netherlands in 2007. The Lego human was of the trademark yellow color, but wore a blue shirt with the words No Real Than You Are written on it. A year later, another similar figurine was found in the sea not far off the coast of Brighton Beach, UK. By that time, it was already known that the creator of these toys was a street artist. He went by the fictional name of Ego Leonard. His real identity is still unknown, as well as the reason why he made those giant figurines and let them loose at sea. His last Lego person was found in the coastal waters of Siesta Key Beach, Florida. There was the already familiar No Real Than You Are on the front of the figurine shirt. But on its back, there was a number 8 and Ego Leonard written too. It's not considered a real name because, if contracted, it turns into El Ego, which is, well, pretty obvious. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.